hello again. That's uh, now the unit seven of the section two of the hydrogen storage with uh, the general title of uh, theoretical or numerical description of solid state hydrogen storage. In this chapter, uh, in this unit, I'm going to go into some detail about how we can introduce the assumptions first to create a numerical approach about the hydrogen storage uh, when it comes to solid state form. Then uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to introduce the whole um, equations we're using and then I'm going to show you how to um, establish uh, this numerical model on, uh, on the software. So to begin with, I'm pretty sure uh, that so far you really understand that the solid state hydrogen storage is a quite complex problem. And that means that we do have chemical reactions, we do have diffusion, phase transformation uh, or formation when it comes from the metal to the metal hydride and heat transfer and temperature stuff. So we must uh, introduce some assumptions if we need to simplify somehow the problem and uh, to make it. So we need to remember when it comes to the theoretical description that everything comes to a software and the software, uh, the more detailed is the software, the more heavy is the whole software. So we might take some information maybe after a few weeks or if we simplify the the model and we're quite sure that what we see on our screen is quite valid, yeah, we can reduce the computational time. So it's up to us again. But some of the most common used assumptions are that initially at the beginning of the hydrogenation process, the temperature and the pressure profiles are quite uniform. The local, uh, there is local thermal equilibrium between the gas and the solid phase. Uh, the thermal conductivity normally and the specific heat capacity, CP and CV, uh, they do not change during the whole reaction, although we really know that they both depend upon temperature and the temperature goes up and down the whole time. Uh, the fourth assumption is quite valid when it comes to low temperatures uh, and the fourth assumption is, uh, is nothing more than the radiation due to heat transfer is quite negligible. And finally, uh, it depends again on the pressure when it comes to uh, to describe numerically uh, the compression of hydrogen, this is not quite valid, is that hydrogen is treated as an ideal gas when it comes to the thermodynamic point of view. So it's up to us again to um, take some of these assumptions and based on those assumptions to start creating our, uh, our model. So the first uh, so, again, when it comes to solid-state hydrogen storage, we are combining three main equations over here. The energy equation, the momentum, and the mass equation. Let's start with the energy equation. And assuming for, from the first assumption that we do have this local thermal equilibrium between the gas and the solid state, uh, we are able, instead of using two different equations, one for the solid, one for the gas, to combine them together and to have the uh, one equation about the energy. And the equation, you can see it's over here. Uh, I'm going to just describe this equation. This term is the temperature gradient, the temperature over time. Over here, we do have the temperature gradient. And this term over here, as you can see with the red uh, lines, is nothing more than the heat source. Because we know that during the hydrogen storage or release, we do have an exothermic reaction when it is uh, storage. That means we have heat produced or when it comes to uh, to release, it's an endothermic reaction. That means we have hydrogen, uh, we have heat that must be given to the system. So this term over here is the heat source. Normally, the units are uh, watts per meter cube. As you can see over here, we have a term which is called the effective heat capacity of the, heat, the hydride and is uh, a contribution from both the solid and the gas phase. Same for the effective thermal conductivity, again, is a contribution from the gas phase and the solid phase, and this is the porosity. So each one of the gas and the solid phase, they do contribute, but again, the contribution depends on the porosity, okay, on the uh, void fraction. The, the rest two equations is the hydrogen mass balance, uh, and normally for the hydrogen mass balance, we're using that equation over here. Uh, so the density over time is equal to, uh, to the mass rate over here. And for the momentum equation, normally we're using the Darcy law, where Darcy law, uh, Darcy's law describes the diffusion of a gas 
through a porous uh, material and if we neglect the gravitational effects the velocity of the gas during the diffusion is given by this one and we do have the permeability and over here is the grad of, uh, of pressure as well. The, as you can see over here, just to go one step back, there is one term which is M and if we go a bit back, another term is M. Those terms, M is the kinetic factor. Remember what I told you two units ago, we must be able to extract the kinetic effect from the uh, two models. Uh, this is why, because we need to double check that this equation of the uh, kinetic expression uh, describes the actual stuff. So, as you can see, we're talking about um, mostly an Arrhenius-based uh, equation over here. So, the hydrogenation rate is expressed by this one. That's a constant rate, the exponential of the activation energy over uh, the gas constant R, 8.314, times temperature. The, now, this is the logarithm of the pressure of the gas in time to the equilibrium pressure. And this, remember that, is the driving force, the pressure difference between the supply pressure to the actual equilibrium pressure. So, the more, the faster is the reaction. So, during the reaction, this pressure drops, so the reaction slows down, slows down, slows down, until theoretically goes to zero, so we have no other reaction. On the other hand, we have the dehydrogenation rate is expressed by uh, this term, quite similar. One major difference over here, we don't have a logarithm, but we do have the difference between the equilibrium pressure to the actual, uh, to the actual gas pressure over the equilibrium pressure. And finally, if we take into account the uh, hysteresis of the isotherm and the slope, we can uh, introduce the equilibrium pressure, which is like this where uh, sigma s, sigma zero correspond to the uh, to the hysteresis and this y uh, is a slope effect over here. So based on these models, on these assumptions and these uh, main equations of energy, mass and momentum, we are ready now to take them and introduce them into the software. Um, the first thing we have to do when it comes to, um, to the theoretical description is we need to make sure that whatever we see in our screen, those beautiful lines, colorful lines, uh, they do correspond to exactly what we, uh, we want in reality. So the first part is the validation of the whole model. As you can see over here, this is from a um, uh, commercial-based sievert uh, apparatus over here. And uh, during this theoretical uh, approach, we try to reproduce the whole reactor over here. Uh, on the two bottom figures, on the left-hand side, you could see the temperature versus time. The red dots is the uh, experimental data. The uh, black dark line is the simulation results. As you can see, we uh, were able to describe it quite accurately. Same for the uh, hydrogenation uh, fraction. Uh, as well over time. So we are pretty sure that the model, the specific model for the specific material is quite valid so we can proceed to take all the information we need. Remember, uh, for different materials, although you can introduce the same equations, you might not find very good results. The reason why is because there are several mechanisms. For example, there is this has been a huge, really huge research in the magnesium, description of the magnesium, and some people uh, they did came up with uh, another model that they did claim that can describe more accurately than this one. Or when it comes to complex hydrides, again because it's a two-step two reaction, again we have to make sure that whatever we see over there describes accurately what we see. Now uh, that is the main part of the theoretical description, the main equations and the main assumptions. Mm -hmm.